Now we're going to talk about techniques for encouraging dogs to relax. And this is where clients get to do interventional changes in their behaviors that are actually fun for the dogs, but they're different. This is a very different way to think. This is talking about focus training and it's talking about truly changing behavior through changing the way the dog perceives their behavior, the way they feel when they're doing the behavior, the way they feel physiologically when they're doing the behavior, and realizing that they don't like to feel distressed and they have a choice that they don't have to feel distressed. This is cognitive behavioral therapy for dogs and cats and horses, and it will work on any species because all of us become distressed and that shared physiology that we've discussed is a very ancient physiology. Uh, it's conserved across all mammal species. So anybody can learn that if they do things that will cause them to be behaviorally and physiologically calmer, they do feel better and then when they realize that they did feel better, they have control over how they react the next time. So we're gonna talk about relaxation, focus, and cognitive training for dogs. Relaxation, focus, and cognitive training are all ways to stimulate learning of replacement behaviors. And these are behaviors that dogs can use instead of their arousal and distress behaviors in the process of learning how to become less aroused and less distressed. So we wanna teach them a behavior that they feel comfortable enough saying, okay, I remember what it felt like when I felt awful. But when I do this, I feel well. And oh, I have some control over how awful I feel. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna take a deep breath and then I'm gonna exhale and that felt very good and that was so much better. And I'm gonna think about how I'm doing this and I'm gonna take a deep breath and I feel so much better. Oh, and now I'm gonna think about how much better I feel. And for those of you who now think I'm crazy, I'm gonna show you dogs doing this because dogs can learn to do this. Dogs are as cognitive as we are. Every bit of data is showing that domestic dogs share all of the cognitive states and all of the neurochemical signatures in their genome for neurotransmitters that we do and all of the mistakes that are in their genome. We underestimate our patients all the time. So what is relaxation and cognitive training in dogs? The first thing we do is we teach dogs to attend to us, to a cue, to watch our face so that they learn to trust us. We teach the dogs to take a deep breath. We then expand the interval over which they hold their breath. And then we engage these sets of strategies um, in non-aroused, non-reactive periods to offer the dogs some choices for their behavior and to teach her she can make her own choices, that she has the freedom to make her own choices. She can decide not to be upset. Relaxation, relaxation is one choice that actually directly interferes with the neurochemistry of fear. So let's talk about focus training to teach dogs to attend. This is one of my dogs. This is the lovely Missy Rose. And as you uh, watch this video, this video has sound, but you will not hear very much. I have a yellow toy that she has never played with. It still even has its tags on it. It's the toy I use to test dogs because they don't see a toy like this very often. It's yellow because yellow is one of the colors that dogs see well. And I'm very slowly moving it back and forth across her face. And what she is learning to do is to just slowly monitor the toy. I go back, I go forth, she goes up, she comes down, she watches the toy move around, she stops, she focuses, she's calm, she waits, she waits to see the toy move back and forth, very calm so that you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that she can focus. Okay, that's the first step. The next step is relaxation and taking a deep breath. Why do we want dogs to relax? Dogs know that feeling threatened doesn't feel good. Dogs can learn any operant routine for them to actually change their behavior, but for them to change their response, they actually need to be able to use a counter-conditioned response in the context of feeling better. So we've seen people condition dogs using operant treatment to sit there, to sit there and wait in the noise and shake. That's not what we want. 
What we want for them to do is to feel better and to have some control over how they react. If we can teach dogs to self-calm by taking a deep breath, they'll slow down, they'll stop moving, they'll be receptive to calmly and slowly being petted and massaged, they'll be able to follow the rest of our physical and verbal cues. Such dogs will also learn that they feel better and that they can get more information when they relax. And that's the key here. They need accurate information that will help them assess the stress level and the danger and the risk level because by definition, when you're anxious, you can't do that. If they can do that, they'll learn that they have some control over their reactivity and they will choose not to react. So how do we teach dogs to take a deep breath? Well, the key to this is to know that dogs cannot pant and sniff at the same time. So dogs can learn to monitor a hand holding a treat. The dog will track an odor back to the source of the treat if the hand is slowly moved, so the dog will follow the odorant stream. And if you stop moving the treat, the dog will go to the source of the odor, so they'll focus on it. Dogs who can look at your face learn to get accurate information, so we want them to couple this to your face so that they trust you since all of your signals should be congruent. And if the dogs can take a deep breath, they can gain control over their own sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system responses that makes them react as if there is a threat. That heart rate that goes up, that increased vigilance, and that panting. Okay. So when we go to teach breathing and relaxation, we start by getting the dog, and this does work, as I said, for other species. I've done this with horses to attend to treats. We then are quiet. I don't want any extraneous distractions. You couple the treat to your hand so that they start to follow your hand and the treat. Gradually work up to them looking at your face. Then as soon as they can do that and follow the treat and follow the odorant stream, move the treat until they begin to relax their face. As they get more comfortable, their face will relax. As soon as their face starts to relax, give them the treat. Go for a more relaxed face, and as soon as they're as relaxed as they can get, then ask them to hold their breath by moving the treat in with the odor stream into them a little more closely, and as soon as they're really focusing on it, hold it still, and they should flare their nostrils to go to that um, source of the odor. And when you do this, you'll see their nostrils flare. They may flatten the top of their nose. They may move the planum. They may move the fold. You may see them twitch. If they're a little dog or a thin dog or a short-coated dog, you'll see them expand their chest. But they can do this. And you can then couple that with whatever you wish, sitting, lying down, letting out deeper and slower breaths, and lower heart rate. So I have a dog I've conditioned to actually lower his heart rate on cue. And here's that dog. And he's doing this flawlessly. You can see that he's following my hand that has a treat in it, so he's looking at me. I want him to not look at everything that's around him. I want you to look at me, learn to trust me, watch, focus. We've done the focus exercises. Pay attention. I have a treat. I'm gonna move it in a little more closely, and you can see that his face begins to relax, and as I move it in a little bit, I move it a little bit more, it relaxes more. As soon as his jaw is loose, I move the treat right into his nose. He immediately closes his mouth, and he dilates his nostrils. They become round instead of oval. You can see that in this picture quite well. And he's, he's inhaling that scent. And as soon as they're as round as they can get and he's held his breath, I give him the treat. Now, this dog knows how to do this. So we've got a series of pictures you will not get the first time. So as soon as they even stop wiggling their nose, give them the treat. But if you do this correctly, you can build up to this. So let's see what these dogs look like when you actually do it. Here's Picasso actually doing the behavior. So I'm holding the treat. Notice he's looking at my face. I have the treat at a distance. You can see that I just moved it from the way he raised his head. And as soon as he sat still, I moved it in a little bit. He flared his nostrils. I gave him the treat. He sits still. I move it in. He flares his nostrils. I give him the treat. OK, good boy. Brilliant dog. Okay, this is little Linus. These are all my dogs. They're the dogs I have available on a daily basis. This is little Linus, who's not quite as good at it, but is very, is very ardent about doing it. Um, he moves in closer so he can get a better look. He's visually impaired, so he needs that. And you'll see as he gets in closer, he does a little better. I hold the treat. He flares his nose. I give him the, I give him the treat. 
Okay, you're going to see him do it again. I move it around, I zero it in. As soon as I do that, he flares his nose and I give him the treat after he's held his breath. Such a good boy. Here's the lovely Missy Rose doing this, and she's very good at this. She was the dog in the focus video. She sits very still. You move it in, and you can see she's moving every bit of her nose. And you can see her get to the point where she's really focusing on getting that breath as deep as it can be, because she knows I'm not going to give her a treat just for wiggling her nose. I want her to really take a deep breath. So if you watch, there's the really deep breath. She flared her nostrils, round nostrils. The planum came off, absolutely flat top. So if you look at the folds, you'll see what happens. Here's Toby. And Toby's going to do something that some dogs will do. He's going to cheat. And this dog is used for so many behavioral demonstrations that, oh yeah, I hear that word. I'll go do this. She'll give me a treat. So when I ask him to hold his breath, the first thing he does is he wiggles his nostrils all around. And I, you know, and he's flaring them, but he's not holding his breath. He's flaring his nostrils without taking a deep breath. So until he took a deep breath, and now you can see him doing it, I want a real deep breath. And he sits back, he flares his nostrils, he holds it, and you can see that he's holding that breath. Now he gets a treat. So dogs will try all sorts of things and use shaping procedures to get them to do the thing that is easiest. But now you can see he's fully committed to this and he would hold his breath for upwards of 60 seconds if you wished him to do so. Okay, so this is a dog whom I did not teach to do this, but a veterinarian I taught to do this, took it home and did it to his own dog and his own dog is a golden retriever. So he has a pink nose. So you'll see Charlie do this. And Charlie learned to do this very quickly and you'll see Charlie's nose change. Absolute beautiful flare, absolute beautiful flare. And he gets the treat. So when we do these types of focus and relaxation exercises, they form the basis for cognitive behavior modification. And when we do them with more detailed behavior modification and medication protocols, these relaxation techniques allow dogs to script their own calmer, happier lives. If we do this, we'll have better relationships with our pets, we'll do the right thing, we'll, make, we'll help them make the humane choices, we'll give them the quality of life they deserve, and we will also be happier. So there's a selfish component here. But this is all about improving their very short lives on this planet and how they live with us.